السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح للأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Indeed all praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We thank him, we praise him and we seek refuge in him from the evil of ourselves and our wrongdoings, for those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide, no one can misguide. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves to themselves, they cannot be guided to the straight path. I bear witness that there is no God, Lord or deity except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that Muhammad is his final messenger and prophet. May peace and blessings be upon him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Reminds us in the Holy Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون. O you who believe, have taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa taala in the manner in the manner that is most befitting to Him subhanahu and do not die, do not leave this life except in the state of Islam. <coughs> My dear brothers and sisters. I wanted to share today and reflect upon a story that we all know very well, the story of Prophet Yunus alayhi salam. Prophet Yunus, when he was sent to his people and they rejected his call, he became very angry. He was not happy, of course, with the rejection of his people to the call of Allah to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as he called them to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and <clears throat> when that happened he decided to leave them and it's important to note that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his uh, as he reve- as he sends wahi to the prophethood uh, or to the prophets in that prophethood is that they stay and they do not leave their people without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even in the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we see this on and on as times of migration 
for the Sahaba or even the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself and even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leaving to Ta'if. All of these, in all these cases, in all these examples, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had to request the permission of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to leave his people and to leave the da'wah of their people and the call of their people to, to the call of someone else. But in this case, Prophet Yunus Alayhi Salam in his anger and his, his dislike to what his people did, he, he left. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says in Surah Al-Anbiya, وَذَنُّونِي إِذْ ذَهَبَ مُغَاضِبًا He was very angry and he left. He left in a, in a very angry state. He chose to leave his people and he walked towards the sea. وَذَنُّونِ إِذْ ذَهَبَ مُغَاضِبًا فَظَنَّ أَلَّا نَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ he, in the state of anger that he was in, he forgot. He did not encompass or embody in his, in his conscious mind what the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would decree upon him for doing this. And he did not realize what a trial and what a tribulation he will go through due to this. So he left and he walked towards the sea. He got on a ship and he was leaving his people and he left. And in the midst of the sea, they were hit with a storm. <clears throat> and, and the people of this ship, as the storm hit them harder and harder, they believed that there must be a sacrifice to be made in order to save the ship. They decided that everyone will, th will put a lot, they will randomly draw the lot, and whoever they choose, that person will be the sacrifice, who will be tossed out of the ship. And this is a common practice. So, as they did this, the first draw came out to be Prophet Yunus's draw. Prophet Yunus did not accept this, and he asked them to redraw. And three times consecutively, they drew the lot of Prophet Yunus alayhi salam. So he decided, this is it. And he, he jumped. <laughs> there was no fleeing from this qadr. He decided to, to jump into the ocean. As he drowned and drowned in the ocean, he then was... Famously, as we all know, swallowed by the whale. And this is a, a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this trial, as long as we, we have this yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will help us, Allah will protect us. And as a prophet, it was above and beyond that. He was blessed with a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be swallowed by the whale, to stay in the whale, for a period of time, and then for the whale to throw him back onto the, the, the beach or on the shore. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also blessed him there with, uh, with easy access to food around him and a plant that would keep the, the insects away from his withering skin. And all of these blessing after blessing after blessing. And finally, as he was starting to get better when he went back to his people, he found that they had believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, miracle after miracle, blessing after blessing that he was that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed on Prophet Yunus alayhi salam. Now I'm sure we all heard of the story, we all heard of the blessings and the miracles that he was bestowed with. But what can we learn from this story? What can we learn from what happened to Prophet Yunus alayhi salam? The first is to, to learn to control ourselves in time of anger. And even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in the hadith, لا تغضب, and he repeated it over and over, لا تغضب. 
this concept of anger, this concept of, of, of uh, when we're furious inside, we start to go to non-rational actions. We start to act in ways that are not correct. So the Prophet Sallallahu advice to us is to try to control this anger. And before we come to rash decisions or, or quick decisions in this anger, the Prophet Sallallahu also instructed us with a few things, making wudu, changing the position, if we're standing to sit down, if we're sitting to stand up, many things to, to, to remember Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, many things first to seek Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala's guidance in this, in this state of anger, but also just the concept of if you're standing, sit down, if you're sitting, stand up, changing your position, giving yourself some time to calm down before you jump to this, to whatever decision you're about to make, trying to reach a sense of calmness before you do something that you regret. So this is the first one. Trying to control ourselves in a time of anger to try to avoid coming to, uh, making decisions that we will regret after that. The second is forgetting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees everything. And this is a state of mind. This is a state of mind more than it is something that we will, sh it will reflect on our, op uh, on our actions, but it first and foremost is a state of mind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned again in the story of, of Sayyidina Yunus that this, for that moment of anger, he, for, he, he, he did not consciously think about the qadr that is about to, to, to happen to him, to be bestowed upon him, um, or, or as, a re, you know, uh, um, as a result of the action that he's doing. So the second outcome is we have to constantly remember and constantly think, and it comes with practice and it comes with remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we constantly start to uh, remember that everything that is happening is by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with that, he c and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls everything. And so with that, we go to the third lesson, which is if we consciously believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is decreeing everything and is controlling, in control of, uh, of, of all of our affairs and is capable of doing anything, then that is where we turn to what we'll have to, we have to acknowledge then that item number three to learn from this story is turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and in the case of the story of Yunus alayhi uh, salam, uh, one thing I forgot to mention in the story is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that as he was in, this, uh, in the stomach of the whale, he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al He He remembered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for forgiveness. And, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that this hadith, this dua is a dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and that is a reason for acceptance of our dua. That when we have wronged ourselves or when we have committed a sin or we, for, we were forgetful, we were in a state of ignorance of the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a dua that can help us repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and help us achieve inshaAllah a, a, an accepted dua, a dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept from us. And the, the last miracle that, that uh, Prophet Yunus alayhi salam that I wanted to reflect on, that Prophet Yunus alayhi salam is, uh, saw is that when he went back to his people, they had believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and, and this is obviously a little bit of, of item number two that we mentioned, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees everything, but also a reflection of إِنَّكَ لَا تَهْدِي مَنْ أَحْبَبْتِ That we do not control who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides. We do not control, we do not know, whether it's ourselves or others, who the hidayah is granted to, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses with this hidayah. So we have to constantly for ourselves make dua, remember and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this hidayah. But also uh, it's a reminder that 
those around us, the Prophet ﷺ could not grant hidayah to his uncle. And that Yunus السلام, no matter how much he tried with his people, he couldn't guide them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But ultimately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided them with and without him. We, he, he, you can be a means of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hidayah. We can put our effort to be a means of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hidayah. But the hidayah comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it's, it's in our benefit to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's method of guiding these people. With or without us, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses for someone hidayah, they will, they will turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the question is, will we be a means of that or will we not? Will we choose to continue to strive and struggle to be a means of hidayah for someone? Or will we turn away and will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose someone else or something else to be a means of their hidayah instead of us? أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا عباد الله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا أو الله guide us and make us a reason to guide others أو الله we ask you to guide us and to make us a reason for to guide others O oh Allah, we ask you to forgive our sins. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka, inna kunna min al-dhalimeen. O oh Allah, there is no Lord or deity except for you and we have wronged ourselves. O oh Allah, ya Allah, inna ka'afoon, kareemun, tuhibbu al-afu fa'afu anna. O oh Allah, you are kind and forgiving. O oh Allah, please accept our repentance and forgive our sins. O oh Allah, we ask you to alleviate the suffering of our brothers and sisters around the world. O oh Allah, we ask you to bring justice to our brothers and sisters around the world. O oh Allah, we ask you to alleviate their pain and feed those who are hungry and, and bring justice to those who are wronged. Ameen, ameen. Wa akhru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa aqim as salah. Sorry, but before we make a comment, just one of our brothers, uh, his grandfather passed away, uh, Yaqub. Uh, if we can remember him in our dua and our prayer. Jazakum Allah khair. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah Ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Hayya ala salati, hayya ala falah Qad qamati salatu, qad qamati salah Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar La ilaha illa Allah Turn to Allah in your prayer. Pray as if it's your last. <coughs> Allahu Akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى 
ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم